Full Mechanics Calamity Gundam. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we have the Full Mechanics GAT X131 Calamity Gundam, piloted by Orga Sabnik, a biological CPU, a fancier word for druggy. Appearing midway into the Gundam Seed series, the Calamity is part of a three-man team alongside the Raider and Forbidden Gundam, which acts as main antagonist mobile suits and are frequently seen battling the Justice and the Freedom until they died. The Calamity serves as a long-range support unit, which it inherited from its predecessor, the Buster Gundam, and boy does it look like it fits that role. The Calamity is a 1-100 scale model kit, however it's not a master grade, it's a full mechanics kit. And what does that mean? I have no idea. I am well aware they released the full mechanics lines for the IBO series kits, which are also 1-100 kits but not reborn 1-100 kits and are not master grades and also are not no grades, so they're full mechanics. Grade. And I guess this is a reboot of that line because they don't want the Calamity being a master grade, so that means no inner frame. Here's the box, box art looks pretty good, as it should, and judging from the pictures of the side of the box, when painted by a professional, anything looks good. So what does it look like out of the box? My kit is panel lined and fully decaled up as instructed by the manual. And needless to say, this is a good looking kit. The massive weapons are not overbearing and makes him look like a badass. I mean, get a look at those cannons. Definitely not trying to overcompensate or anything. But seriously, what the hell is that? Like it's a cool design, you get him in a cool pose, then suddenly dick. What the hell is the purpose of having a pointy crotch on a giant robot? I never even realized the Calamity even had this until I built the model. But I digress. Back to the kit. Released in June of 2021, the model kit form of the Calamity is pretty much identical to the anime counterpart. Separating itself from traditional white Gundam kits, the Calamity sports a more teal appearance with some nice yellow contrast, as well as some light grays and some dark colored plastics that definitely adds on some subtle accents to the kit. I never thought I would like this color combination, but I dig it, it's pretty good looking. And to better see the shape of the kit, I'm just going to remove all his weapons and leave on his backpack. For a kit that's not a master grade, this kit has a lot of surface level detail and provides a decent amount of panel lining opportunities. There's quite a bit of colored part separation which is really nice. And even with the backpack, the kit still looks very intimidating. But, you know what's not intimidating? The build. The kit was very easy to build. I never had any issues with the build itself. Straight build, it came out looking pretty good. Put on some panel lining and apply the decals and it looks even better. But how is it on articulation? Let us see. It's on a bolter, so we can pivot side to side like this. Great up and down movement. This much of a head rotation. No 360 because of the backpack. And an excellent neck extension. We have this much of an internal shoulder rotation. Really good. And here we come to the first problem I have with this kit. This joint right here is prone to coming off. Though it is easy to put it back in. That's what she said. Excessive movement of the arm may lead to the shoulder coming out. So just keep that in mind. Shoulder pauldrons are on a hinge so it can move up and down. Thrust on the shoulder can move side to side. I also want to mention that these thrusters come off very easily, but reassembling them is also very easy, so it's negligible. These panels on the pauldrons have a hinge that allows them to move this much, and the panel on the rear functions the same way. The arm could abduct this much, unfortunately restricted because of that thruster. The upper arm could do a full rotation. The elbow has two joints, giving it an excellent elbow bend. The hand is on a ball joint and functions the exact same way as every other gun plus hands. Also comes with a ball jointed thumb and fixed fingers. The Calamity has this much of a side to side bend. Yeah, not that great. And also a very limited ab crunch and back extension. The two Schlag long range beam cannons are on a ball joint, allowing a pretty good range of motion. Which is good because it makes them very poseable. The vents underneath the backpacks have some limited range of motion. Not that important, but it's a nice extra. And since we're on the backpack, let's take a look at it. The backpack itself connects with a slotted peg right into the back, an overall very secure connection. On taking a closer look, the cannons look pretty decent. Though having a simple design, it does have some surface area detail. And if you choose to panel line it and put on decals, it looks even better. Continuing with articulation, front skirt is on a ball joint, and it has excellent range of motion. The side skirt is connected to a ball joint, and like many other side skirts, tends to fall off. And the back skirts have a simple up and down movement. And the Calamity has a pretty good split with the only limiting factor being the side skirts. But if you didn't have that, oh, yeah! we have this much of a high kick, any higher and the front skirts will pop off, this much of a back kick, this much of a double knee bend, excellent range of motion, the leg could perform a 360, pretty good ankle side to side pivot, full rotation for the foot, 
This here ankle arm can move up and down. Ankle dorsiflexion. And interestingly enough, there's a sliding hinge joint on the foot. So in terms of articulation, the calamity is not bad. Easy to pose with some loose parts that will fall off if you move it a lot, but they're easy to put back. Moving along, we have accessories. It might not look like much, but his backpack has two cannons. Okay, first up, we got the Toad's Block 337 millimeter plasma sabot bazooka i don't know i'm just reading it off the wiki and that thing is big that's what she said it's taller than he is and also it has an adjustable handle this will make posing with the cannon a lot easier personally i think the bazooka looks pretty good there's some good surface level detail and decals make it look even better to have the calamity hold this thing we are given one trigger finger holding hand and that's specifically for this bazooka once detached just reattach the hand and you can either rest it over his shoulders, right under the backpack, for more of an artillery pose, or you can just tuck it right under his arms. Regardless, both look great. The kit also comes with another pair of holding fingers, however it's pointless because it can't hold anything. Alrighty, next up we have the anti-beam shield, armed with the Kiefer Zwei 2 barrel 115mm ram cannon. It's a pretty cool looking shield. It has nice colored part separation and good detail. Also it's a shield that got weapons on it, so that's pretty cool. And here's a size comparison. Pretty decent size. In addition, the ram cannons have some movement in them. Although the cannons don't move independently, they still have good range of motion. And if we flip the shield upside down, we can find some good level detail here as well. And also a flipping handle that can slide up and down. And to attach the shield, we're gonna have to use this peg here. First things first, slide the handle right through the hand. Now just clip that peg earlier, right into the slot right over here. And there you go. Calamity fully kitted out. Hey, I found the adapter piece for this guy. I thought I threw out the runner, but I didn't. This adapter is special because it's the only one that will fit the calamity. So here he is on an action base. Looking pretty good. Now let's shake this motherfucker. Ooh. Yep, that's a loose shoulder joint. Oh no. There goes the other arm. And as you can see through extensive testing, if you could call it testing, this kit does come with some loose arm joints. But that's only if you shake it violently like I did. Surprisingly, the thruster part on the shoulders didn't fall off though. Otherwise, a decently solid kit. But how big is it? Time for some size comparison. First up here it is next to an entry grade RX-78 II, real grade new Gundam, a fellow 1100 in the form of the master grade Buster Gundam, and the predecessor of the Calamity Gundam. Here it is next to my previous review, the Figurai Standard Amplified Gallimon, and to compare it to a Zoid that has as much heavy weaponry as he has, the high-end master model Panzer. Then we have DK, Dorimon, Haro, Egbert. And in terms of shelf presence, as good as any other 1100. However, the color and weapons make it stand out a little more. So what are my final thoughts for this kit? I personally love the design and I think it looks really cool. The color is very unique, decent amount of part separation, good panel lining opportunities, decals look pretty good, and it was a really easy build. Nice and simple, overall probably only took me 7-8 to eight hours of on and off building. And before I forget, the weapons look really badass. For full mechanics, they are very detailed, and the Calamity has no issues holding them. And in terms of articulation, the Calamity is pretty darn good. Only limiting factor is the shoulders and the head. Putting the Calamity into poses was not difficult at all, and that made it pretty fun to play around with. However, it ain't perfect. The Calamity does have somewhat of a loose shoulder joint. From what I can tell, repeated arm movements just pretty much dislocates the arm. Another issue I have with this kit is this thruster here. Sometimes it sits solid, and then sometimes it just comes off. But these issues are pretty easy to fix, and doesn't really affect my overall opinion of this kit. If you like the design of this kit, pick it up. It's also a beginner friendly kit, so there's that. Now since the full mechanics kits are back, here's hoping the Calamity gets his friends, the Raider and Forbidden. And maybe, just maybe, the Sword Calamity. Oh please Bandai, please. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked it. I enjoy making it. Let me know what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed the video enough to check out my channel. If not, that's fine too. Take care. Bye.